Chicago over to the sunny side of Florida to talk about this Miami Dolphin team that it, 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 it's feeling it's feeling like it's starting to crumble a little bit. Um, obviously not without tour again. Uh, they 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 lost over the weekend, twenty four to three to the Seahawks. Obviously now two and one, oh, sorry one and two on the season after losing to the Bills, thirty one to ten, but beating the Jags on opening day, twenty to seventeen. Um, yes, Skylar Thompson is is not it. I think we can agree with that, Johnny. He is uh, he was he was pretty bad in the game against the Seahawks, thirteen up uh, for nineteen hundred and seven yards, no touchdowns, no no picks at least. Um, but it's telling a story, you know, thirty five and twenty they are with Tua. Uh, five and nineteen without Tua. I mean, is this also a McDaniel issue as well as a Tua issue in this team, Johnny? I mean, what what have these guys got to do? And and is there a broader picture for this franchise outside of just losing their their quarterback? Yeah, something something's not quite right. I think we 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 sort of saw that even in the first game where Tua was was fit, but obviously you know losing their quarterback with the, the 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 offensive weapons that they have and the system that they run um is you know obviously going to be hugely detrimental for the dolphins but you know they're averaging just 11 points a game um i think yeah if you if you look back to last season that surely could have been in you know the the the, the late 20s um we're used to seeing this miami team be um you know incredibly fast at, at scoring and, and and electric and it's it's just been a really slow start to them i think teams are starting to, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I, I do think Daniel is, 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 is a very good coach. Um, you know, I think he had a bit of a honeymoon period last year where he was, um, you know, someone quite revered across the league for his, um, um, you know, his, his, his style, um, both on and off the field. Um, but the teams, I think, seem to be working him out a little bit. That's obviously not helped by the quarterback, and that is, you know, the the number one um, issue that they have to solve. I think they, we could be looking at the dolphins. The dumps, dolphins, for me, feel like the real dumpster fire potential team if they don't get a, a quarterback this year. And we could be looking at them having a really, really high um, draft pick, considering you know who they have to play, particularly within division. You know, I even think you know if you have someone like Skylar Thompson coming up against. The Patriots defense, which still is, 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 you know, they obviously got obliterated by the Jets. Is still, you know, a team that can can win games. Um, yeah, I, I really struggle to see the the Dolphins um, being, you know, more than five six win team uh, unless they get someone else in. We obviously don't know what's going to happen with Tua. He could be back, but I I, I feel this whole cycle comes back to them getting a new quarterback next year, unfortunately. Um, like I say, I don't know if Tua will retire, um, but even though they have signed him to a, a long-term deal, I, I I can't see him being the, the, the future in, in Miami much longer. Um, I don't know how you both feel, but if they have a high draft pick, you know, unless, unless they perhaps go out and sign someone like a veteran, obviously Sam Darnold's been, been, been brilliant. He's a free agent. But for me, it feels they they could be in a position to 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 go after and draft a, a really good quarterback from from what is looking like a, a, a tasty group, I think, in in twenty twenty five. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that information and sort of hand it on to James with the whole quarterback and coach thing because, it, like Johnny said, it they have a quarterback problem, but do they have a coach problem as well? Because you know, Johnny just said you know, people adored Mike McDaniel last year, but. The brass tax of it is he's a bit of a media darling coach. The media loves him for them reasons. Like he said, his style is offensive style and also his style off the field as well. You know, his it is very boom or bust potential, his offense. It's a lot of motions. It's a lot of trickery. But the brass tax of it is he's won in 12 in his last 13 games against teams that are better than 500. You know, he's been to the playoff twice, twice and crashed out the wild card both times. You know, he's coming up and gets to get next against the Patriots, the Colts and the Cardinals. Three games that are pretty tough on paper at the minute, actually. You know, the Pats' defence is very good. The Colts, they can either really be a boom or bust team. And the Cardinals are playing some oddly exceptional football at the moment. Like, they're looking at their... I've seen Mike McDaniel and I've interviewed him and watched him at the podium. 
And that was after his loss against the Chiefs in Germany. And he was a very, very, very different character to the one we see on TV. It was very different. He was really sombre and it was strange. And actually, it was uncomfortable. It was an uncomfortable room to be in, to be honest. And he made it that way. And not out of being, you know, he wasn't mean or horrible or, or anything like that. But his attitude after that loss was, was it was like he was a, a completely different person. And I was quite excited to see him, you know, even though he did lose <laughs> to the Chiefs. I was quite excited to sort of see him on the podium and, and see how he can be. But what it, it, really I'm, what I'm getting, the final point I'm getting to is, is though there is a quarterback problem clearly in Miami, is there a bit of a bigger picture at the coaching position as well? Yeah, I, I, I take your point. And I think that it's right to ask the question. Um, you know, just going back to what you said about, you know, when you were there and you're in the room, obviously some losses hit you a little bit different than others and so um maybe that was just a particularly bad day but i i do think you're right the way that things get spun through the media and everything else he's got this like he clearly is an intriguing personality in a lot of ways and the media likes to take the sound bites that that just add to that and f continue to fuel that and, and feed those to us maybe we're not seeing everything um I think he's a good coach. I think he's a good offensive mind. I think he's been let down over the last few years by his defense. And, you know, is that the coordinator? Although they did have Vic Fangio in who runs a pretty solid defense, but, and they have had players, but they perhaps not had a very full, consistent, completely healthy group at all the right times. And, and, you know, some of that just comes down to luck. Um, but then you look at the Chiefs, for example, who, when they get injuries, they find ways to plug the gaps. And, you know, OK, they've had a very consistent system now uh, for a few years, but just Miami don't seem to be able to step up in that way. I think league wide, there is questions around coaches. You know, you look at Kyle Shanahan struggling at the moment with the 49ers as well. And you sort of think, is this a lack of adaptability? Is this overconfidence in the system that you run and not being able to read the opposition midway through the game and say, actually, we need to make these fine adjustments here and maybe we'll be OK? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think McDaniel is, is the right coach for them if everything is there and available. I mean, I don't think we're going to see Skylar Thompson again. I know they signed Tyler Huntley last week, and I thought maybe he would play this week, but obviously it's perhaps a bit it's, too it's, short it's been, for him. It's been, it's been said on Twitter in the last half an hour. Let me just find the tweet quickly. Adam Schefter put it out there. Um, Dolphins head coach said it also was a possibility for sure that Tyler Huntley would be would be Miami starting quarterback on Monday night for the Titans. That's after Skylar Thompson was considered day-to-day -day with a chest injury. They also yeah. had Tim Boyle on the roster as well. Well, you know, oof, it's uh, it just goes from bad to even worse. Um, Johnny's just having Tim Boyle nightmare flashbacks from last season. Um, bring it on, bring it on. Uh, my, my my thing is, do we do we overhype the Dolphins too much? Yeah. Like, obviously, they have. I think so. They have. Well, who was voted? You know, the 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 top one hundred player in the NFL, Terry Hill, but you know. Jalen Model and Jalen Ramsey, obviously great players, but I don't think there is anything more than than than. I'm trying not to do them a disservice because I think I think they, they you know they they are a, a good team, but I I don't think they are a, a, a team yet that is a quarterback away from challenging for um, um a, a, a Super Bowl, and I don't think they have been for you know the last couple of years. Um, they you know. I think just even thinking back to last year, they, they haven't beaten a team until you know way late in the season who had a winning record. Um, this isn't me trying to do a disservice to the Dolphins, obviously as a divisional rivals to the Jets, but I I I I think they have a lot of lot of holes, um, particularly as you mentioned, James on on, on defense. Um, and yeah, I, just, I, I'm, I I don't know. I, th I think you're right about what you say, though, there, Johnny. I think that their stars shine so brightly that it then sort of covers a lot of the gaps 
maybe on the line and the defense and everything else. And I don't think they've got a particularly great offensive line. And I think they've struggled with that pretty much ever since two has been there. Um, and I, I think it's the most difficult position to to just sort of plug gaps in in the NFL. You know, we we're just talking about Chicago and their O line and what they're going to do and everything else. It, it, saying they've had problems there for years, it is the most difficult position because when you draft a guy, it probably takes three or four years for them to become a a, a top level player if they're going to get there. And that is, you know, making sure they've playing in the right position and then learning the system and then reading the and it's just all those little intricacies that, that take time and experience to build up and with line plays we tend to give them that little bit of extra leeway and leniency that we don't give with quarterbacks for example but you know unfortunately for Miami it's just all coming together at the at the wrong time um, and I think that there may be a need to go back to the well and and maybe start this thing again and maybe think about moving on some of your your big money players and buying in more experienced free agents you know you you're talking about the quarterbacks and like Sam Darnold for example that would be great for them because I don't think you'll get another year with the Vikings with JJ McCarthy there um or you know again drafting and or do you try drafting again it is it, and then you know you could question Tyreek Hill is there and he wants to win and um is he going to sit and start again or do you move him on and see what you can get it's but he's getting older it it's a really difficult one i think in miami to know what to do i don't think they're far away I, if two is healthy and playing well and the system works, I don't think they're a million miles away. I think their bigger problems are on defense than they are on offense that would be able to get them that little maybe push into the playoffs. But there's so many question marks over so many positions at the moment. And the quarterback, obviously, is the biggest one that I just... Eh, it's really hard to do. I, I feel quite sorry for, for Mike McDaniel, to be fair, because this is just... This is a really difficult sort of unprecedented position to have to be in and you know they've said about getting in outside experts to to help Tua in his recovery and I think he'd love for Tua to be able to play I don't know if he wants to be the guy that says no to him though it's really hard to say to a guy with a seemingly invisible injury saying sorry but we we can't have you back because we just can't risk it and Tua feels fine and wants to play. Um, so I think he's in a difficult position. Um, but I, I think they're closer to to tearing it down and starting again than they are to pushing on and moving forward, unfortunately. And that's, I, know, I, feel, I feel quite sad about that for, for Miami in a way, because there was something there, something intriguing building in, a, in an intriguing, exciting division. Um, and it's just slowly slipped away through unfortunate injuries um and yeah that's going to be that's going to be a difficult one to swallow for for dolphins fans yeah, it's funny how you feel like you've got it all in the palm of your hands and then out of nowhere it seems to sort of slip out your fingers doesn't it uh